Hi, this is Pat Coakley, and once again, I have photographed Queen Anne's Lace. There's something about the this wild uh, flower that uh, some people call it a weed, but I uh, I just simply love them. And so this was my latest uh, photograph of them, uh, taken side of the road. Um, obviously underexposed, and uh, it's right out of the camera. I haven't done anything to it. And uh, they were two blooms, and they were entwined themselves. I didn't do it. And there was the background of several other uh, of the Queen Anne's Lace uh, in bloom as well. As many of you know, I can photograph these uh, in full bloom as these are, as well as the bud of them, which I find beautiful, as well as the dying desiccated version of them. For some reason or other, I just always am drawn to them. Anyway, um, I decided once I, I did uh, get home and get it into Photoshop that I would make it into a square format, not vertical, and make it into a black and white print, which I was quite pleased with and happy with. And yet, uh, this format of having a mostly black background is very similar to my other photographic style, which is to use scanned photographs of blooms, of vegetables, of God knows what, but the black background is a staple of those scanned photographs. And I find that with some of the blooms, with some of the vegetables, with some of the objects, the dead black of the background, I don't think, is as good as having some sort of texture. And since I'm somewhat of a texture queen digitally, I've tried many different uh, variations of adding texture. And while some of them are pleasing to me, they are not the uh, the they're not the effect that I would like for certain images. And for this one, I uh, particularly wanted to try something that had more of a painter's surface. And I knew that the encaustic could possibly provide it if I could figure out a way to do it. And so I decided, okay, I'm going to get out my encaustic stuff. And as any of you who do it know, it is a big pain in the neck. If you don't have a studio that has a dedicated encaustic corner, um because you need to heat up wax, you need to have an exhaust system so you're not breathing in the fumes of the wax. So for me, even though I, I use it with certain things um, all the time, I don't venture into the fine art uh, encaustic use unless I'm experimenting and trying to find a way where I can use the encaustic wax and paints in a way that I can't reproduce in Photoshop. I'm just lazy that way, okay? But at any rate, so I decided, and you know, we're going to be combating with my landscape person outside now, who which I don't know what he's cutting because nothing has grown in two months without rain. Anyway, so I decided to put the uh, encaustic crystals uh, just flush onto the surface of the photo that I mounted on an 8x8 print, uh, 8x8 uh, wooden uh, cradle box, and to iron it on, and to use the, uh, <laughs> I think that is a pizza divider, but one is a uh, uh, a painterly tool, 
and to try to just guide some of the melting wax into a pleasing texture. I ended up using probably four different iron-ons of the encaustic crystals to get a texture. And then I added the oil stick pigment, uh, a black color. And then let that dry for a day. As you well know, uh, sometimes uh, the oil sticks takes a much longer time, particularly if you have any quantity on there. But I had more of a light touch to it, so it only took 24 hours. And I began to like what I was seeing, but at the same time, I'm not sure it's that visible to you. So I decided to take it over to the north window and Northern Light was able to reveal some of the texture that I had gotten from ironing the several uh, layers of encaustic beads. But it also brought with it that almost twilight blue color, which is not painted in. It is just a function of the Northern Light hitting um, the the black encaustic, but it made me want to try and reproduce this twilight color onto the finished encaustic photograph. And that's going to be my next phase. I'm going to try to uh, use some violet and blue as well as the uh, encaustic blender and see if I can make it translucent enough to uh, make the finished product look like this because without the northern light right now this looks more black than the sapphire twilight color. So that's going to be my next uh, iteration of this, but I can't do it until the encaustic blender arrives <laughs> with UPS. And that may not be for um, a week. So I'll post it on my website uh, when I've done it. Anyway, I hope this was of interest uh, and see you next time.